This room is the staff lounge. Uh, it was originally a study room for students and later on uh, was used for the library. Uh, but today it's for staff. When I was here, it was only for men's staff. The ladies had their own room because ladies and men teachers were not supposed to mix. And I think it was only in the men's staff room that smoking was allowed. And of course, now smoking isn't allowed anywhere in the building. But we're going to go into this room. So one of the spaces that students never get to see, the staff lounge. Uh, originally, it was actually a reading room for students. And its main feature is the inside of the Oreo window, which we saw earlier. Uh, this is the window which extends outwards with a column supporting it from below and is decorated on the outside with carved sandstone. It's always been a nice place to sit and read a book uh, and uh, it, that's still the case today. When I was a student here in the 1960s, this lounge was for men teachers only uh, and they could smoke in here. There was a separate lounge for the ladies, the lady teachers, uh, and it was understood that they did not smoke. Nowadays, of course, nobody smokes inside the building. We're on the fourth floor of the school, but this door is labeled 501. So there's a reason for that. If I open this door, this is the bottom of the escape ladder from the attic. One of the most dramatic changes that happened to the building, the most significant change was actually this stairwell. Uh, in the 1960s, this was actually a classroom, the classroom above it. But the fire regulations said that the existing stairwell, which was farther to the east, was too far away from the auditorium. So for fire safety, they had to relocate the entire stairwell. So where we are standing uh, is completely new but it was built as a replica of the original stairwell farther to the east. They also built it to have greater capacity between the second and third floors because that was where the heaviest student traffic was. And then going up to the fourth floor, uh, it's a narrower staircase. But that was a massive project which uh, involved uh, completely eliminating the, the classrooms and, and one and the, uh, the biology laboratory, which was on the fourth floor. The only thing that they didn't do at that time in 1977 was put in a handicapped elevator. And it would have been so easy, given the amount of reconstruction that they were doing in this area, they could easily have incorporated a handicapped elevator as well. So you've seen how many steps there are at Lisgar, and that's one of its biggest shortcomings in that the school is completely inaccessible. So we're going to go down to the basement now, and we're going to see the cafeteria, which uh, was built as part of the 1908 addition to the school. When the West Wing opened in 1908, the basement here included a new boys' gymnasium. They didn't want to lose the advantage in playing basketball of having pillars that they could bounce the balls off. So the basketball courts still had these, these pillars uh, right on the center line with the baskets. So Lisger, uh, so Lisger basketball students took real advantage of that. This remained a gymnasium until uh, 1953. Uh, the new gym actually opened in 1951. Uh, the girls, the boys and girls uh, moved into the new gym and that meant that uh, the 
uh, space upstairs could be converted into physics and chemistry laboratories, and the space down here could become a cafeteria. The room was originally much bigger than this because there was a, uh, parts of it were carved off to create a staff dining room and a kitchen and servery on that side. Uh, but this is basically the, uh, the cafeteria the way that it is now. Uh, when I was a student here, this is also where we held after school dances. So the informal dances, which we called prep dances, were held here right after school uh, and, and uh, from five until about seven, whereas the more formal dances were held in the gymnasium across the street. These columns actually are very important because they're holding up the floor of the auditorium. The auditorium is two floors above us. There's one floor of classrooms in between, and these columns go all the way up through those class, these columns go through the classrooms to create the support for the auditorium. So engineering-wise, this extension to the school in 1908 uh, was quite an ambitious project certainly much more so than uh, the earlier editions, which had only added a few classrooms uh, at each stage of expanding the school. Uh, another important event that happened here, uh, I mentioned earlier in the tour uh, that uh, everybody's favorite English teacher was Walter Mann, and that he had taught uh, the Governor General, Adrian Clarkson, when she was a student at Lisgar. For one of the Lisgar reunions, she proposed that Walter Mann come back and give, who he'd been in retirement for more than 10 years, but that he come back and give one last English class. So that was set up and uh, people got tickets to attend it. It was held here and Walter Mann sat in this room with Adrian Clarkson and all the other people, including me, I was part of that group, to listen to him give one last talk uh, about learning English. And that was quite an experience for us all. Originally, this end of the basement was for, uh, was the boys' locker area. And also there was, uh, the, uh, the cafeteria in uh, 1908 was originally planned as the boys' gymnasium, and it remained a gymnasium until 1953 when the, uh, when the new gym was, uh, was opened across the street. When the gymnasium was built, Lisgar was still a busy traffic street, and so it was uh, considered necessary to have a tunnel for the students to get safely across the street to the two gym classes and also music classes, uh, and uh, were, were held on that side of the street. 